Okay, people really quick when either copies to or didn't. Okay, so let's see what we have to do. Well, I'll abbreviate a little bit. Average ROC stands for rate of change. Maybe the most important concept in mathematics. Okay. The basis of calculus and everything that follows from calculus. But the average rate of change of Y with respect to X. So WRT stands for with respect to. Okay. I'm going to write it as delta y over delta x. Last time I wrote it as change in y divided by change in x. The delta symbol stands for change in. Okay. This is a change in the value of y divided by a change in the value of x. It's not y divided by x. It's the change in y divided by the change in x. And in this case, so we have a picture. You have the point two six here and the point eight here, negative three. So you construct the fundamental triangle. I talked about fundamental triangles last time, didn't I? Here's a fundamental triangle. The round is eight minus two, which is six. The rise and of course we're moving in this direction, from this point to this point. So the slope hypotenuse moves this way. The run and the rise move in the same direction. Okay. You go from this point to this point. And the rise is then this value minus this value. It's negative three minus six, which is negative nine. Okay. So that the delta y and the delta x, the delta y is a change in the y value. You go from six to negative three, you change the y is negative nine. You go from two to eight. Your change in x is six. Okay. So the change in y over the change in x is rise divided by run. Let's try to get blurry on me, but I think it's still okay. Uh, rise divided by run. Which is then negative nine over six. And of course, we can write that as negative three half. Okay. That would be a good complete solution, including a picture, because the picture tells you what to do. Now, you could use yc minus y1 over xc minus x1 if you want to do it without understanding what it means. And of course, you should be able to use that formula to check your reasoning if you do it in terms of what it does mean. So if you did y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, you get the same thing. Nobody can plug that into the formula. Okay. Don't be content with the formula. Go to the picture. So that tells you more about what's going on and gives you much better background for understanding what you're going to see in calculus. Formulas don't tell you much. Pictures tell you everything. Formulas tell you what the, the pictures tell you what the formula means. Okay, if, you, if you're not working in terms of meanings, it's going to be hard. Okay, well, average rate of change of distance with respect to time. Now we can put that on the graph.
Then, after 10 seconds, the distance is 80 meters. After 30 seconds, the distance is 200 meters. Now, if I'm going to scale this graph, I'll put the 30 seconds here. And also, it helps in seconds. Your time is in seconds, your distance is in meters. Uh, so, we're going to have 200 meters up there. That's the biggest number we're going to have. So we can kind of start subdividing things. If that's 30, this would be about 15. Then we have 20 and 25, and we have five and 10. And you can label more points than that. It's up to you how many points you want to do. Once you've established the scale and the tick marks, then it's pretty obvious for everything. But you do want to make it obvious. Okay, so there's 200, so here's going to be 100. And down here is going to be 50. And up here is going to be 150. So now, after 10 seconds, your distance is 80 meters. Well, here's 10 seconds. Here's five. And 80 be about here. I'll give you a point like this. Okay. And at 30 seconds, it's 200 meters. So. What are these days? I'll hit that point, but I missed it again. Um, because there's our approximate graph. So we get a lot of things with that graph. We could find the equation of that line. Okay, but that's not what we're looking at because we're not even assuming that the distance is a linear function, a straight line function. Okay. So really, uh, this could be a graph that looks like this, as far as we know. Okay. So, do we have a straight line? Do we have a curved line? We don't know. All we know is these two points. So, for these two points, we construct our fundamental triangle. Okay, so the run is 30 seconds minus 10 seconds equals 20 seconds. The rise is where we end up minus where we start, 200 meters here. 80 meters here. Hundred meters minus eighty meters or one hundred twenty meters. Average rate of change is change in distance divided by the change in time, which equals rise divided by run, which is 120 meters over 20 seconds, which is six meters per second. But on the average, that's how fast something is moving. If that's you running, then the graph will probably be close to a straight line, but maybe tailing off a little bit. You might get tired, right? Okay. So that's a pretty good average speed, six meters per second. That's pretty fast. Okay. You know, that's about. 14 miles an hour or so. Most people, healthy people, your age can run that fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, just my age, me and I. Maybe six feet per second if you're lucky. 
Okay, well, that's I can do better math. Um, yeah, that, that, that's reasonably good speed. Okay. The same bolt is in the range of eight meters per second. Actually, be more than that. No, he'd be like a, uh, 10 or 11 or 12 meters per second. Okay. So it's not world class speed. Things are moving along okay. Um, if you were following this curve here, it wouldn't be you because your curve can't get this speed. Okay, that steepness there is probably more like 30 meters per second, which is 70 miles an hour. Okay, that, that's the interpretation of this graph. You want to understand that you have interpretations. And you want to understand how to make those interpretations because it gives meaning to the mathematics. And why do you do the mathematics that doesn't have meaning? Okay. Well, maybe it's fun, but you know, in, in, in your careers and, and so forth, you want to be able to get the meanings. You want to want to understand these aspects of your graphs. Okay. Now, this one required you to scale the graph. And, Maybe well on this. Okay, so here's our graph. Uh, and your G number is this coordinate, your D number is this coordinate. And you're asked to find the average rate of change of Y with respect to X in the interval between your A coordinate and your B coordinate, okay? The, the interval between your A number and your B number. Okay, so that means, well, Let's say G is 22. So you got to replace these with your numbers, right? And then we don't have the apostrophes anymore. So we erase the apostrophes. We erase the apostrophe G with the D number, no, which might be 10. Okay. Now we have the interval from A to B. Let's say that A is 4. Now, where's four on this scale? This is 22, which means that 11 would be about here, and 10 might be just a little bit to the left of that. So we'll say 10 is here, and 15 is probably about here, and five is probably about here. Okay, and if this is 10, then half of that is five. And then we say, okay, well, let's see, this would be about three, this would be one, two, three, four. And then here would be about eight, nine, seven, six. Not real great, but I look at it. Okay, so let's say that A is four. So so that would be four. And let's say that B is eight. That kind of contradicts the idea that D is 10, but uh, you know, I worry about that. But D really couldn't be A. I mean, B, A and B really couldn't be 4 and 8, with D being 10. That just wouldn't work with your algorithm. But that's not an important question. So B is, let's say, 8. Okay, what's the average rate of change? Well, we find the point in the graph for which x is eight. Okay. Then we estimate the y coordinate. Well, this is five and this is six. I'm going to say the coordinates of this point are four and six point six. Okay. And here we have eight. And that looks like maybe this point is eight, four point three. Does that make sense? 
what points are on the graph as I sketch it, as you sketch the graph. And as you locate your points, it might be a little different. I'm not big on, I, I, I don't worry right now about whether you scaled, the, whether you subdivided the graph with extreme accuracy. But certainly, four should go to the left of eight. And eight shouldn't be all the way over here by 22. To be in here. So, you know, do your best with the scaling. You can I pretty much accept your scaling as long as it's reasonable? Um, so now we, I really want my purple shot. I'm getting worried, my purple chocolate. It should be. Oh, there it is. Okay. That should be over here. Okay, I, I just want to use a different color here. So I'm going to take this part of the graph so I can draw my fundamental triangle because it's too small to label it. So now I have two points. Doesn't matter whether this is a good scale or not. This point is four, six point six, and this point is eight, four point three. So now I can draw my triangle and the run is. Eight minus four, which is four, and the rise is six point six minus four point three, which is two point three. So the slope is rather the same. On the graph, it's rise divided by run, which is 2.3 over 4, which is 0 0.575, if you want. And that's your average rate of change. Okay. So, you know, your, your, your book asks you to do equivalent of these things for your, your, your homework. So if you didn't get it, uh, get in there and work it out. Now I will say there's a site you can go to if you didn't get the homework done on time, or you can get the homework done for half credit. It's just a copy of this page, except I don't know that I've changed all the assignments. Dates, so I would have to do that. It's a little bit of a pain the way the thing is set up. Uh, should take me five minutes to do this or something like that. So um, I'll try to get that at least for the uh, current assignments and I'll send an email to the access folks. Okay. You can sign into that anytime and get half credit on an assignment, even if you've completed it. If you complete an assignment with 20 points and you make six, if you want to get the other four points, work it again, you know, work it on the alternative side, and then I'll change your score on the, on the actual side. Okay. Okay. Okay, so move the point B units in the horizontal direction. Uh, Let's say that CA is uh, eight five. And B is seven. Okay, so seven units. If this is eight units, this might be seven units. Okay. So we'd indicate that by an arrow, indicating this is seven, and here's a new point. That was tough, right? Okay. 
the well understanding of terminology. Okay. Now, who's the new point? Negative three, that's in the vertical direction. Okay, again, we started here. At this point, it was eight five, and we moved five units this way. Uh, the new point is not. Now we're labeled the new point. And once we label the old point, this new point is now. 15 five, isn't it? Okay. I had eight five up here as close to this point, so I'll use it. Okay. Anyhow, we moved negative three units, whereas five units on you know, x uh, 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 on the y axis, no y corner is five. We move it negative three, we get two, two. We don't think we get a 15, 2. Okay. Then we move it on the other side twice as far. We're still at 15. But it's 15, negative 4. Okay. That accomplishes all this. Well, If A5 is on the graph of Y equals F of X, then this point on the graph of Y equals F of X minus seven, because if you move seven units in this direction, Your graph, your point goes from uh, the f of x function to the function f of x minus seven. Okay, that's a rule for horizontal shifts. You're going to get that in your homework. Um, and then Fifteen two would be in the graph of y equals alpha of x minus seven minus two, because the y coordinate here and x minus three, the y coordinate here went down three units, right? So whatever the y coordinate was here, it goes down three units. So the y coordinate that was here is now true less. Now, why the x coordinate is replaced by x minus seven here? Big that is a little bit of a mystery right now. I'll explain it to you after you've done the section one point four assignment. And then fifteen negative four. And I did something out of order. Is on the graph of this function. And this doesn't really follow one of your rules to be able to understand it because whatever y is here, it's going to go negative and it's going to double in size, right? So you multiply by negative 2. 
you're multiplying your y coordinate by negative two. So your y coordinate is two. You multiply it by negative two because you're moving twice as far and on the opposite side. Okay, well. Those are rules. Now, usually you follow an order of operations. Usually you do vertical, or you multiply the distances before you start adding and subtracting distances. Okay. You normally multiply by negative two here and then move on. Uh, and I probably should have done it that way, but I didn't. Okay. Um, Example. A5 is on a graph of y equals f of x, which is equal to x minus 3, right? Since f of 8 is 8 minus 3, which is 5. Make sense. Then if y equals f of x minus seven. And if x equals 15, what does y equal? Work it out. Um, let me do an intermediate step for you. Do this intermediate step. What is f of x minus seven? If f of x is x minus three, what's f of x minus seven? Write it out. You get a little, little bit of a hang up here. If f of x is x minus three, then f of x minus seven is what? Well, x has been replaced by x minus seven, hasn't it? So I'd better replace this x by x minus seven. Okay. I close that gives me x minus 10. Okay. So, that's why f of x minus 7 is x minus 10. So, if x is 15, what's y? You got to plug 15 into the function f of x minus 7, right? So, 
f of x minus 7, y is f of x minus 7, which is f of 15 minus 7, you replace on the x like that, which is f of 8, which is Eight minus three, which is five. This f of x minus 7 is a new function. It can be a little confusing. If x is 15, then f of x minus 7, because of this, has to equal 15 minus 10, which is 5, right? Of course, if you plug 15 into f of x minus 7, you get f of 15 minus 7, which is f of 8, which is again 5, right? So you got a new function here. Um, I'm not going to say too much more about that. Two more in your theater. Okay. Um, what's a formula? The one thing I'll say here. The reason f of x minus 7 shifts your point 7 units to the right when it looks like it should be shifting to the left, right, is because x has to be 8 units or 7 units bigger to give you the same value. Okay? x has to be 15 to give you the same thing that you get here if x was 8. That means the point is out there for 15, 7 units to the right. Okay. I don't have to understand that to follow the formula, but we do want to understand this. So we'll talk more about that. Formula for f of x minus 7. Minus three, and I think that's off the screen, but you know, like this. F of X minus seven is X minus 10, as we figured here, right? or x minus 13. Now, what do you get if you plug x equals 15 into this? Well, uh, you get two, which is exactly what happened when you move this point three units down. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do the last one. It's enough. Uh, challenging enough. It's uh, not very much confusing, but it's very challenging. It kind of makes it confusing. Okay.
Okay, you got your basic square function. You have the graph that has one square. Look like this. Well, for example, this point is two, four, not four, two. And this point is one, one, and so forth, right? And if you move every point seven units to the right, what happens? Well, here's two. Here's four, six, seven. Well, this point moves seven units to the right. 2.00 corresponds to the point now uh, seven zero. Okay. So that point is going to be on the new graph. The point two four. Where's it going to be? Well, it moves seven units to the right. It'll be at nine four, right? So you're going to max equals two seven units. So that's going to be here's my here's eight. There's nine. What happens to this point? Well, it's at sort of the coordinates of this point. That's negative two four. You should know that. Look at this and know it. Because you really need to be up to speed on your basic functions. There are only seven points here. You should be able to calculate it quickly in your head. You should know instantly. Or nearly instantly, what they are. We use them a lot, for example, and we don't want to have to do a lot of work to understand the examples. Okay. So, well, this will also move seven units. So I'm going to take it just a little bit below this now. But we, um, we go that far. Certainly being below the arrow, we go too far. So this goes to here. And you can easily figure out what the coordinates of the points are, but it's going to be seven. Okay. And these other points go along for the right and they make the same pattern, don't they? Because they all move the same distance in the same direction. Pattern of the point that is going to change. So you're going to have something like this. And then, if you want to draw a curve, or at least the extended basic function, there we have it. And over here, we have the transform function. Okay. Now, This is y equals x squared. I'm telling you that this is y equals x minus seven squared. Okay, well, let's make a table for y equals x minus seven squared. Okay. Sorry, folks, we're a little bit crazy week here. 
had somebody email me yesterday, another college, saying, hey, can you give me an estimate of how much it would cost to institute a physics lab here? Sure. Yeah. Well, I've done that sort of thing before, so I don't want to respond, but it took a while. Uh, I'm kind of distracting me from other stuff. No excuse. But at this point, yeah, somebody knows they can ask me that. Unfortunately, I was able to answer because they've got a meeting tomorrow. They've got enough. Uh, all parts for you. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do a table, not a graph. Okay. There's your web, there's your Y. And your table. is going to want to use the numbers that are seven years to the right of those numbers. Okay, so if X is And this point that I labeled seven four should have been five four. Okay, so we add seven to every x coordinate. So what do we get when x equals five? Here's y equals. Part of the x minus seven squared. So make this much of your table. Then I'm going to ask you to continue for two more, maybe three more points, maybe fill this point. In. And right after the arithmetic, so let me speak for your time. This is right after the answer. You do arithmetic so you understand the connection. That would be a reasonable domain, but that's not going to tell you much about this function. So try to make the table like I do. Okay. So we don't do zero, one, two, three, four, five in the basic functions. Anyway, we do negative two, negative one, negative one, negative zero, one, negative one, two. But here, we're moving all those x values, seven units to the right to see why this works. Okay. So do what I, do what I saw. Okay. Thank 
plug in the original left side. Hope it's not hard. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm going to do this. Okay. 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 We just said x is negative two plus seven, that's five. Okay. So you're going to do five minus seven. This is negative two, square, which is four. Okay. So we have the point five, four, which is exactly what we got by taking this point negative two, four and moving it seven units to the right. Then we have. X equals six, so that's going to be six minus five squared. This is square of negative one, which is one. Okay, now we normally do negative one half plus seven. I did, but I didn't Which is negative 13 over two. So we get negative 13 over two. It's 13 over two. Uh, six minus five is six minus seven. That's one half squared. In any case, that gives you one fourth. So, you know, extra five, you got zero plus seven is seven, not five. I don't know. What that is. Okay. You got seven minus seven squared, which is zero squared, which is zero. So, when x is six, you get one. Well, if you take this point and move it six units to the right, you get this point. Which is that? X equals one. Because this is at x equals negative one. When you have seven units to the right, you have x equals six. Well, you want to understand that if you possibly can, because this shows you how the graph shifts to the right. Okay. If it was x plus seven squared, it would have to shift to the left. And you might want to think through the numbers and why that happens. Okay. Now, you're going to have a lot of examples and rules and explanations. Uh, this is a really important assignment. So try to understand it as best you can. And we'll continue working on it. You also have a written assignment for tomorrow. Okay.